Thank you, Peggy. I'm Nick Bertel, and it's an incredible honor for me to be here to introduce Meryl Streep, Hugh Grant, and Simon Helberg. I really fell in love with this movie. You three are incredible in it, and uh, it's really... And I first have to ask a question about the singing. <laughs> Meryl, you sang as Florence with a phenomenal amount of virtuosity. I can't imagine how challenging it was to miss so many notes so consistently. <laughs> Do you feel your previous singing experience prepared you for singing as Florence? Or was it really a new challenge to sing so virtuosically badly? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I, uh, I love singing, and I'm not allowed to sing at home because everybody says, Mom, shut up. So I don't really sing. So I, I find characters who um, sing, and in various things I've been able to do it. But this one was a special challenge because... Oh my God, why did I have that martini? <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> um, uh, what was the question? Yeah, so it was um, a special challenge because this person sang in a very specific way. Her mistakes were her mistakes. We all know people who sing badly, and you leave the room. You know, you don't want to stay. But there's something in her that drew audiences and that m made them uh, want to stay there, yes, to laugh at her. But also to see there's just something that had to be specific to her joy in the doing, in, in the pure love of an amateur, doing it for the love of it, not for the uh, fame or <laughs> the skill of being able to do it very well, but just to <laughs> because of the love of music. And that touched me, and I thought it was equal parts funny and touching. So. How did you actually... Uh prepare for the singing of this? Did you... I got Audra McDonald's teacher, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm sure he doesn't want to know to be publicized, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> his business will fall off. But, yeah, Audra said, I said I have to, we were making a film together, Ricky and the Flash, and I said I have to sing all these um, bel canto arias and uh, some very challenging things. And she said, you have to go to Arthur Levy. And so he, he taught me the, the arias as best as I could sing them. And then I screwed around with them. And it was, it was fun and it was specific because we did all the recording first at Abbey Road Studios and I thought that I would be dubbed. Okay. I thought that I would lip sync. Okay. And Stephen Frears decided it would be a good idea for us to do it all live. And so, yes, yeah, Simon and I um, had to sort of breathe together, live together, and, you know, make this duet happen. And, and that was sort of one of the great pleasures of, of uh, preparing for it. Well, it's amazing because your performance chemistry works so well. And, and Simon, you're an extremely accomplished pianist as well. I mean, how did you prepare for this? Uh, I hope you're hoping you're just going to stop at extremely <laughs> accomplished. Uh, there's a question. Um, I, uh, well, I, I, was j I just existed in a state of terror for months and months. <laughs> Um, because I don't play uh, 
I don't play the opera. <laughs> See, <laughs> I don't play classical music. So I just told Stephen that I did because I wanted to be in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I mean, I play piano well, uh, or I did when I was a teenager. But uh, um, so then, yeah, to go to Abbey Road to record an album of opera music with Meryl uh, was, there was like two dreams that I never thought would happen <laughs> colliding at uh, once. So, you know, I made an album with Meryl Streep at Abbey Road. No big deal. <laughs> um, and we cleared the building. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Someone pulled the fire alarm. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, we desecrated the great walls of <laughs> where maybe some of the best music has ever been recorded. But it's all going to be available on CD. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you miss any of the... Decca Records coming at you August 12th. <laughs> What was that feeling like the first time when you guys actually got out on the stage of Carnegie Hall there to, to have that performance? Oh, man. Uh, we were just <laughs> saying that. We just uh, yeah. there's a picture out in the in the lobby thing uh of uh, us and I remember that feel that feeling. <sighs> and it was really scary. It was really scary. I had asked um Stephen Frears, the director, to shoot the audience first because they were a group of perfectly lovely British people who had no idea what they were going to be, what was <laughs> going to be inflicted on them. And I thought it would be great if they got that audience reaction first. Um, and I regretted that decision for the next two days because I had to sing this aria that people don't sing more than twice a month. Eight times a day, you know, the Queen of the Night and the Lachme de Lieb and some other thing that Cosme McMoon wrote, which I can't yes. remember. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, that's a good point. Because it's like a year ago. Um, but, yeah, so we got ragged shooting the audience, but that first reaction from the audience was spectacular, and it's in the movie. I mean, they really were. <laughs> 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 and that was really fun. That's that was amazing. fun. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Hugh, St. Clair is a particularly fascinating character. He deeply loves Florence, and yet deception is in some ways central to his dealings with her. What do you make of his role in enabling Florence's career? You know, is he a deceitful enabler, a loving protector of her? Is he both? Like, Well, uh, hopefully it's a fascinating conundrum. Um, <laughs> um, that's what we were aiming for. <laughs> But I've attempted fascinating <laughs> conundrums in films before, and <laughs> no one's been fascinated. But I, I mean, I, I quite like the fact that, it, um, you know, generally speaking, in films, people end up being goodies or baddies. And I quite like the idea uh, that in this film, uh, his motives are selfless i think there's real there is genuine real love it's like family yes. love it's like blood and it's deep and very protective but it's all mixed up with selfish stuff as well because without her he's he's nothing he's a rather sad out of work actor and um and i and i like that um sort of uh that uh, yeah that, that, that the mixing up of those things absolutely um in the film, we, the audience, get to experience that excitement and risk of the first Carnegie Hall debut. Um, and Florence's confidence is partly due to her being shielded from the truth of her abilities. But as performers, there's always that first time when you take a big risk and perform in front of a large crowd. Do you each remember your first experiences performing for a large audience? And I'm curious how that first experience shaped your later development as, as performers. Can I go? <laughs> um, yeah, I remember the first time in, um, so it would be 1965 in the Music Man in Bernardsville, New Jersey, Bernard's High School, and it was the first time I'd ever been on a stage, and I was marrying the librarian, and I'd seen Barbara Cook in New York, my mother took me into New York, and I copied absolutely everything she did. <laughs> and at the end, you know, there was sort of silence in the high school auditorium, and everyone stood up at once and just roared. And I and somebody brought me two dozen roses, 
And my father said, that's the end. <laughs> and it sort of was. I was just like, oh, wow, that was really fun. And um, yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, I was extremely moving as <laughs> tree in firestorm. Uh, and I think it was a kind of version of Alice in Wonderland with my brother who's sitting over there and he's going to come up and demonstrate now um, his part. I think you were the March Hare, were you? Yeah, I think you were. Um, anyway, Jamie struggled a bit, but I was brilliant. <laughs> And it was at that moment I knew I was a star. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was a lesbian period piece called uh, Children's Hour. This is the way all great stories start, by the way. Um, by Lillian Hellman. Um, and it's really about a delivery boy who comes in midway through <laughs> to deliver groceries <laughs> to the, the secret town lesbians uh, and it's all in the face of the delivery boy he knows the secret and so that I, that was me I, I had a few lines uh, in that play and I fought for it in high school too because the original delivery boy had dropped out and I went to the director and I said you know there's no such thing as small parts just small actors and I happen to be a small actor too but I could uh, uh, and then he was like, oh, okay, fine, play the delivery boy. Um, <laughs> so I milked it, and, and, uh, and it, was, it was that moment that I yeah, carved a niche in the lesbian period piece uh, <laughs> theatrical event. So Amazing. Was... <laughs> um, you know, uh, Meryl, you mentioned this before about the word amateur and uh, people doing things for the love of it. Uh, in that way, do you think Florence is uh, almost an inspirational example of someone really doing something purely for the love of it, actually, and not thinking too much about the technical perfection at the expense of the deeper emotional significance? You know, when I was in plays, I always used to think that there were people in the audience who were like me, who had been play in plays in high school or in college. And then they'd gone on to do real things <laughs> with their lives. And, but I thought, you know, there's this whole company of people who understand what it is to to want to express yourself that way. And um, so I understand all of our great cultural institutions are supported by people who have some tangential connection to the art itself. And life took them in a different direction. But they love it. They love it deeply. And if someone said, you know, you really could do this. You could really sing. And they had the money and they had the time and they thought, well, <laughs> okay. You know, and they were benighted enough or, or, or delusional enough and had a loving husband who supported them. Maybe they would do that. But I, I, I think that there is that thing, that, that, that uh, understanding that we have between audience and performer, that we're not that far off from each other. You know, the people who do it well, who play music beautifully, there are people in the, in the audience who, who just live to the music. They live to it. They, they love it so much. I'm one of those people. I can't, I can't play music, but when Joshua plays the violin. I feel that thing. I mean, I feel that thing. I think, I could do that. That's why I took music of the heart and thought, you know, I could play the violin. But you, you, you understand the, the love, you know. It, yeah. it's, um, and to me, this movie, it has that, it has accurately that love. If it's delusional, yes, it's delusional. But it's love. And between the people, there's the same thing. And is love a delusion, or is it just the thing that makes life worth living? Who knows? Absolutely. Um, I think we're actually now going to have some questions from fans watching live on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> They're much more interesting than the people in this room. Let's get to it. 
Let's get to those people, those fans. Oh, okay. Here's a question. Uh, the question is, I always envied Florence because she loved what she was doing so much and got to do it. What do you all love doing? There we go. Oh, we just did it right up there, I think. <laughs> oh, that's one thing. What do you, you like? mean drinking? Yeah, yeah so before we got no, we here. Did. We had a big drink. Uh, I, I still have lots of ambitions. Um, I have always wanted to play football for England. and um, <laughs> Move to Iceland. I, I, I don't rule that possibility <laughs> out, actually. Um, I think it could still happen. Um, I want to be a racing driver. Um, I run some of these things are childish. But I, I still have that. What do you still have, Mom? Well, I never know. I, I mean, to me, it's just that I never had to decide what to be when I grew up because something else would turn up each day and, and I could be that. So I've, I sort of found the perfect um, métier or whatever. I like... Uh, that's probably not the right word. Uh, I... For Facebook, um. <laughs> for French Facebook, it's, uh, all the French Facebook fans out there. <laughs> I found the right profession for me. It was the the right thing because I could change my mind every five minutes, which is what I do. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, I thought I answered. I, uh, <laughs> I. What I like to do, I. I, I, I guess I, yeah, I'm really doing what I like to do. I don't know. Um, sometimes I dance at home, and I think I think I have this feeling like I think I could be a really good dancer. I sort of think that to myself, but my kids keep laughing at it, so I think it's probably bad. But there's a secret belief that you know, the dancing. We'll see how many drinks I have tonight. But these pants are already riding up, so they might just come off. <laughs> <laughs> Well, everyone on Facebook is commenting on how excited they are about the movie, how much they love you all. Um, do we have any more questions for from the last <laughs> Just one the live Facebook. audience? One more Facebook. It brings people <laughs> together. Question. Well, there's only one person. Last but. question. <laughs> uh, it's an interesting question. Yeah, it's me on uh, Facebook. This, this this question from Facebook is: uh, Which one of your films are you most proud of? Interesting question. Merrill's Facebook. Merrill's films. <laughs> All of them, I'm sure, is the answer. <laughs> um, are we? <laughs> we just ignore it. Uh, <laughs> All right, that was a great night. <laughs> Thank you, Facebook. Um, I think I think that may be all. I think that may be all from Facebook. <laughs> well, thank you guys thank so you much. Very much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Doing it for the love of it, not for the uh, fame or <laughs> the skill of being able to do it very well, but just to <laughs> because of the love of music. And that touched me, and I thought it was equal parts funny and touching. So How did you actually uh, prepare for the singing of this? Did you? I got Audra McDonald's teacher <laughs> which I'm sure he doesn't want to know to be publicized <laughs> right yeah uh, <laughs> his business will fall off but yeah Audra said I said I have to we were making a film together Ricky and the Flash and I said I have to sing all these um, bel canto arias and uh, some very challenging things and she said you have to go to Arthur Levy. And so he, he taught me the, the arias as best as I could sing them. And then I screwed around with them. And it was, it was fun and it was specific because we did all the recording first at Abbey. Thank you, Peggy. I'm Nick Bertel, and it's an incredible honor for me to be here to introduce Meryl Streep, Hugh Grant, and Simon Helberg. I really fell in love with this movie. You three are incredible in it, and uh, 
Really. And I first have to ask a question about the singing. <laughs> Meryl, you sang as Florence with a phenomenal amount of virtuosity. I can't imagine how challenging it was to miss so many notes so consistently. <laughs> Do you feel your previous singing experience prepared you for singing as Florence? Or was it really a new challenge to sing so virtuosically badly? Wait, what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, uh, I love singing, and I'm not allowed to sing at home because everybody says, Mom, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I mean, I play piano well, uh, or I did when I was a teenager, but... Uh, um, so then, yeah, to go to Abbey Road to record an album of opera music with Meryl uh, was, there was like two dreams that I never thought would happen <laughs> colliding at uh, once. So, you know, I made an album with Meryl Streep at Abbey Road. No big deal. <laughs> um, and we cleared the building. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Someone pulled the fire alarm. Uh, it was... Uh, yeah, we desecrated the great walls of <laughs> where maybe some of the best music has ever been recorded. But it's all going to be available on CD. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you miss any of the... Decca Records coming at you August 12th. <laughs> <laughs> what was that feeling like the first time when you guys actually got out on the stage of Carnegie Hall there to, to have that performance? Oh, man. Uh, we were just <laughs> saying that. We just... Uh, yeah. Because there's a picture out in the in the lobby thing uh, of uh, us. And I remember that, feel, that feeling. <sighs> and it was really scary. It was really scary. I had asked um, Stephen Frears, the, so I don't really sing. So I, I find characters who um, sing. And in various things, I've been able to do it. But this one was a special challenge because, oh my god, why did I have that martini? <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> um, uh, what was the question? Yeah. So it was um, a special challenge because this person sang in a very specific way. Her mistakes were her mistakes. We all know people who sing badly and you leave the room. You know, you don't want to stay. But there's something in her that drew audiences and that m made them uh, want to stay there, yes, to laugh at her. But also to see there's just something that had to be specific to her joy in the doing, in, in the pure love of an amateur road studios. And I thought that I would be dubbed. Okay. I thought that I would lip sync. Okay. And Stephen Frears decided it would be a good idea for us to do it all live. And so, yes, yeah, Simon and I um, had to sort of breathe together, live together, and, you know, make this duet happen. And, and that was sort of one of the great pleasures of, of uh, preparing for it. Well, it's amazing because your performance chemistry works so well. And, and Simon, you're an extremely accomplished pianist as well. I mean, how did you prepare for this? Uh, I hope you're hoping you're just going to stop at extremely <laughs> accomplished. Uh, there's a question. <laughs> um, I... Uh, well, I, I was, j I just existed in a state of terror for <laughs> months and months, um, because I don't play, uh, I don't play the opera, <laughs> see, <laughs> I don't play classical music, so I just told Stephen that I did, because I wanted to be in this movie, 